Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be reading a book called Many Kinds of Matter. And as I read this book to you, I want you to think about the author's purpose. The um, In the previous section, we learned about reasons that authors write the book, write their books. That's what author's purpose is. So as we're listening to this story, I want you to think about why the author wrote this book. And at the end, we're going to talk about your reasons for why you think the author wrote this book. And I know it's kind of hard since I'm recording and we can't really talk together, but you can answer the questions with me as I read this book. So many kinds of matter. Well, just by looking at the front cover, I see some photographs. Remember, photographs are real pictures that somebody took with a camera. When there's photographs in a book, that normally means that it's going to be a nonfiction book. If you remember from first grade, nonfiction means that it's going to be real. So it's going to be about real things. So if I had to make a guess, I think this book would be about matter. But now we have to think what matter is. Hmm, maybe this book will teach us what matter is. Sorry, boys and girls, sometimes my computer's slow to load. All right, so let's go ahead and get started reading this book. And let me adjust it really quick. Sorry, let me just zoom out a little bit so that way we can see all the words on the page. Thank you for being patient. Matter. Matter is everywhere. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. Mass is the amount of material in an object. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. So there I think I just learned that matter is everywhere and matter is anything that has mass and volume. So I guess that I'm matter. I think that you're probably matter. The table I'm sitting on or sitting at is matter. The chair I'm sitting on is matter. So I think just about anything is matter. So I have already learned something new from this book. So I can kind of already guess the author's purpose since I'm learning things, but I wonder if you can guess the author's purpose too. All right, and here I see another photograph. It looks like a boy and his dad on a boat, and I see a caption here. It's important to read the captions in these kinds of books because they're gonna give us more information. Hmm, I think I know what the author's purpose is going to be. Trees, lakes, and people are a matter. All have mass and volume. There are three kinds of matter. The three kinds of matter are solids, liquids, and gases. So there's three different kinds of matter. So that taught me something new. Solids, liquids, and gases are all types of matter. So let's see. Can we think of a solid? Well, I guess I'm a solid. I don't have any space. I'm solid. Um, let's think of a liquid. Hmm. My favorite liquid drink is... Dr. Pepper, so that's liquid. And then let's think of a gas. Well, if I take a deep breath and let it out, the oxygen that I breathed in and then what I breathed out was also a gas. So this book is teaching me lots of new things. All right, hopefully, there we go. So the first thing we're gonna learn about is solids. Books, rocks, and toys are solids. Solid matter holds its own shape. Solids do not take the shape of their container. Marbles fill a jar, but the marbles are still round. So if you look right here at this photograph, it also has a caption, which is going to give us more information. Books are one example of a solid. And then here's another caption. The shape of solids does not change when you put them in a container. So if you can see, they put all of those marbles in a container, but the marbles the marbles are still round. They didn't change whenever they were placed in a container. So that means that they're a solid. This book is teaching me a lot of different things about matter. Now I really understand what a solid is. Solids are not easy to compress. Compress means to squeeze something into a tight space. Bottles and cans are solids. It's not easy to squeeze them into this recycling bin. So this boy is holding a recycling bin and all of the containers are overflowing out of the bin. So solids, they don't fit into tight spaces very well. You can't push them down and squeeze them into tight spaces. 
out. So that did teach me something new about solids. Make sure you still have the author's purpose in mind. Why do you think the author wrote this? All right, let's keep reading as soon as my book loads. There we go. Solids do not flow. Solid candies don't spread across ice cream the way hot fudge sauce does. And then we have a caption that's important to read because it's going to give us more information. Candy sprinkles are solids. They do not flow over the ice cream. So if we look at this container of ice cream, we can see the hot fudge has kind of dripped down the ice cream or flowed down the ice cream, kind of like a river over the ice cream. But if you look at the sprinkles, they didn't flow or move over the ice cream. They kept their shape when they were placed on top of the ice cream. Do you see another solid on this ice cream? Something that didn't flow or lose its shape? You said the cherry, you're exactly right. That cherry is also a solid. You see, they put it on top of the ice cream, but it still looks exactly like it did while it was in the jar. So that would be a solid also. All right, next we're gonna learn about liquids. Oil, syrup, and water are liquids. Liquid matter does not hold its own shape. Liquids take the shape of their container. Water inside a swimming pool on takes the shape of the pool. So when you pour water inside the swimming pool, it doesn't keep its shape, it spreads out all around the pool. And that's what liquids do. So now I have learned about solids and liquids from this book. So if I'm still thinking about the author's purpose, this author is teaching me lots of new things. I have to keep that in mind when I think about the author's purpose. And let's look at these captions so we can learn more. Oil is one example of a liquid. So you see when they pulled, poured the oil in this container, it took the shape of the container. Water in a square pool takes on a square shape. So if you see the water in the pool now looks like a square, but if you drained the water from the pool, it would go everywhere. So water's not really square, it just takes the shape of whatever container it's in. Let's learn more about matter. Liquids are not easy to compress. Liquid milk is a liquid. You couldn't fit the milk in the, excuse me, let me read that again, sorry. You couldn't fit the milk in the jug into the little carton. So all the milk that's in the jug, we could not put it into the carton. So we can't smush down liquid and make it smaller. There's still a lot of liquid in that jug that would not fit in the container. And let's read this little part down here too. It's important to read every word on the page. So that way we make sure we get lots of information. Liquids flow. Liquid syrup spreads across pancakes. So you can see in that photograph, the, the syrup is pouring and flowing onto the pancakes and then flowing down the pancakes as well. So liquid flows or moves across different objects. And remember that there's those these photographs in this book. So this book is probably going to be a nonfiction text because all I've seen is photographs. Also, as I've read it, I've learned a lot of information. So we're still thinking about the author's purpose, but we also need to think that this book is an informational book. So that kind of helps us find the author's purpose too. All right, last, let's read about gases. Air, steam, and your breath are gases. Gas matter does not hold its own shape. Gases take the shape of their container. The air inside a hot air balloon takes on the shape of the balloon. So take a deep breath in, blow it out onto your hand. Did you feel the gas coming out of your, your mouth or the, your breath coming out of your mouth? That's an example of a gas. And a gas on its own doesn't have a shape. It just takes the shape of the container that it's in. So this little girl, the caption says, your breath is one example of a gas. And we can see the hot air balloon is very big and full because the air or gas has filled the balloon. Just like when you blow up a balloon, it fills the balloon. It takes on the shape of the balloon. It's kind of like a liquid too in that sense. All right, let's keep going and see what else we can learn from this book. Gases are easy to compress. So that means they're easy to push together and make very small. Carbon dioxide is a gas. It's inside soda cans. 
it's squeezed into the can to give the soda bubbles. Let's make sure to read the caption to learn more. Carbon dioxide rushes out of the soda cans when you open them. So you know whenever you open up a soda and you flip the top, it makes that sound. That's all of the carbon dioxide or that gas releasing from the soda can. But that gas is what makes soda bubbly and so delicious. Gases flow. The air inside a bubble spreads to fill the space inside of the bubble. So gases flow, and if you remember, liquids also flow, but solids do not. So I think liquids and gases are more alike than solids. Solids are very different. Let's see if there's what else there is to learn from this book. It's given us lots of information about matter. Matter and changes. Matter can change from one kind to another. Oh, so they can make some changes. That's pretty cool information that we learned. Some solids can change to liquids. Some liquids can change to gases. Water is a special kind of matter. You know that water is a liquid, but it can easily be found in all three forms on our planet. The liquid in this mug is changing in I'm sorry, the liquid in this mug is changing to a gas. So if you see this mug down here, that photograph of a mug, it's full of something hot, some hot water. And it the steam is rising off the hot water. So that water is turning into a gas. Pretty cool. And if you see here, this geyser, the same thing is happening. It's heating up really hot underneath the ground and it's turning into a gas. And the waterfall, you can kind of see the steam or condensation there that's coming off the water. And then this photograph up here, the very top one, what is that? That looks like ice to me. So when water is frozen or very cold, it turns into the solid form of water, which is ice. So when water gets very hot, it becomes steam. When water gets very cold, it becomes ice. And when water is just the temperature water normally is, it's a liquid. So it can change to all three forms. That's pretty cool information that we learned. Water becomes a solid if it's cooled. It turns into ice. Water turns into ice when it freezes. Water freezes when it reaches a temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Water becomes a gas if it is heated. It turns into steam. Water turns into steam when it boils. Water boils when it reaches a temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. So that gave us lots of information about how water changes form. All right, let's see if there's any new information for us to learn. Awesome. Water at any temperature can change into water vapor. Water vapor is a gas. This change is called evaporation. Some people use a drying rack after washing their dishes. The dishes dry after the water evaporates. So, you know, um, eventually after you wash a dish or you wash a plate or something at home and you let it sit out and dry, that's because the water is evaporating or turned, turning into water vapor. Pretty cool. Water vapor changes back into a liquid, liquid water when it cools the air. This is called condensation. You can see condensation after a hot shower. The water vapor touches the shower door and turns back into a liquid. So I know sometimes whenever I'm taking a shower and I make my water very hot, my mirror gets all steamy and it looks like it has a fog over it. That's condensation because the water was so hot. Um, it's pretty cool that now we've learned what it is. Have you ever seen condensation on a shower door? Well, I've seen it on my shower door and on my mirror. Sometimes in the morning, too, when you go outside to get in your parents' car, you might see condensation on the windows of your car. Pretty cool stuff. We're learning a lot from this book. I hope you're learning a lot from this book, too. All right, let's see what else there is to learn. Other matter can change forms, too. Cheese is a solid. It melts when it gets hot. It changes into a liquid. Bread dipped in melted cheese is a tasty treat. So, you know, sometimes you can have just a block of cheese or you can have like string cheese. But then when you get cheese hot, it gets melty like on a pizza. I think melty cheese might be my favorite kind. 
Juice is a liquid. It freezes when it gets cold. It changes into a solid. So normally juice is a liquid. You can pour it out of a container and it kind of flows. But whenever you put it into that popsicle mold, it turns into a solid. It turns into ice. And the caption says, ice pops can be made by freezing juice. An ice pop sounds pretty good right now. What do you guys think? We use solids, liquids, and gases every day. They are an important part of our lives and our planet. All right, so that is the end of this story called Many Kinds of Matter. Now, throughout the entire book, we talked about the different things that we've learned. We also talked about things like the photographs and captions giving us information um, about matter. So I want you to think really hard to yourself. Just think to yourself. You can talk out loud or you can just sit quietly and think, why did the author write this book for us? What was the purpose in the author writing this book? What did we get from the book? Give you just a second to think. I know that the author's purpose for writing this book was to give us information or share facts with us. The author gave us tons of facts about matter. We learned about solids, we learned about liquids, and we learned about gases. So the author did a really good job giving us all that different information inside of the book. And the author, author also used, let me flip back to this page to show you, just give it a second to load. The author also used things like the captions to help give us more information or share more information with us. So when the author wrote this book, they wanted to give us information and help teach us about many kinds of matter. I could choose this book when I wanted to learn more about matter. So when you want to learn more about something, you have to look for a book where an author gives you information. That's how you help, that will help you choose a book whenever you want to learn. Now I have to give you a little hint. Most of the time, books that are written to give you information are going to be nonfiction books, which are real, or they're going to be informational books. Those books give you information about whatever topic that you're interested in. So I picked this book today about matter because I wanted to learn more about matter and I wanted to share information about matter with you. So this book was perfect to do that. So whenever you're reading, try to find an informational text that's going to teach you more about a topic. And that the reason that author wrote the book is to share that information, share those facts with you. I hope you guys enjoyed this read aloud and I hope that you have fun working on your independent practice, which comes next. Bye guys. We'll see you soon.